Okay, this is the second video on psychoanalysis. This is part two. Um, this first slide I did not give its notes in class, um, so uh, I will give it to you here. So if you choose to write it down, you can. If not, I'm not penalizing you for not having it in your notebook. Um, so the first part of the uh, psychoanalysis, we talked about Freud. Um, the Freud is the, the main founder of psychoanalysis. He is the father of psychoanalysis, but he's not the only one that has been a psychoan uh, uh, involved in psychoanalysis. So these are what we call neo-Freudians. Neo-Freudians, um, they subscribe to the psychoanalysis theory. However, they don't necessarily believe in all the things that Freud taught and believed himself. So. Um, they agreed with Freud on particular things, like they agreed that there is an unconscious, um, they agreed that childhood is important, um, and they agreed that defense mechanisms are important. Now, when I say that they believe that they are important, they didn't necessarily believe the same things about uh, that Freud did about childhood and defense mechanisms and the idea of the id, the ego, and the superego. So some of the things that they disagreed on kind of points out how they differ in those areas. So there was um, Alfred Adler and uh, so there's Alfred Adler and uh, Horney, um, who were uh, psychoanalysis. Um, it is obviously interesting that Horney is a woman um, who describes two psychoanalysis. But basically, they argued that, yes, childhood is important, but a child is important because of the social tensions that um, occur during childhood, and they shape somebody's personalities. Uh, and so Alfred Adler particularly um, talked about how um, he feels that working to overcome those um, feelings of inferiority and those tensions that occur during childhood, um, those are going to actually shape your personality. Um, the another um, neo Freudian and um, a really close personal um, person to Freud himself was Carl Jung. Um, Jung, um, that's yes, J U N G, Jung. Carl Jung, um, he was actually a student of Freud for a long time, um, and uh, they were very close for a long time. And then Jung kind of broke away from Freud, and um, Jung kind of changed um, his viewpoints on psychoanalysis. And so they had a huge huge split and it was a big conflict between Freud and Jung. Um, and so it was very controversial. Freud did feel really betrayed by Jung, um, but Jung, you know, stepped out and um, felt like uh, Freud was not going in the right direction. So he spoke up. So Jung believed that they, we have this collective unconscious and that we have this shared memory traces from our species history, and that helps shape um, our personality. So all three of them were in agreement that, you know, unconscious and childhood and defense mechanisms are important and that they exist, but they didn't necessarily agree with Freud as far as um, what they signify. All right, so how, um, oh, this was uh, the psychoanalysis, uh, psychoanalyze yourself. Um, so we did this in class. So if you so choose, you can pause. I'll show you all of the questions here. You can pause the video here and you can answer these questions. Um, remember, this is just all for fun and this is, this is how psychoanalysis works. So if you pause here and then these are the answers. So this is telling you what the, your answers from the previous slide, what they actually mean. All right, psychoanalysis today. So psychoanalysis to analysis today. Um, research has shown absolutely no proof for Freud's viewpoint on childhood as far as overcoming um, uh, the uh, sexual repression and things like that and the pleasure principle, the oral stage, the anal stage. Yeah, there's no, no research proof on that. Um, also, Freud's viewpoint of dreams um, showing uh, our coming through with our unconscious, um, our, what our secret desires are. There's no proof of that. There's also no proof that defense mechanisms are there to hide our impulses like our sexual impulses and our drive to survive and things like that. Um, so research does not agree with Freud on those things. Um, this one is kind of a funny. Uh, it says interpretation of dreams flowchart. So this is according to Freud. So Dr. F Dr. Freud, I had this crazy dream. And he says, are you a girl? He says, no, I'm a dude. Then he says, it's about your mom. And if you answer, yes, I am a girl, then you are insane. That's the way Freud kind of approached a lot of things. So 
again, it's kind of funny. Uh, but many researchers do argue um, that they argue uh, about repression. So there is some conflict about repression. Freud argued that many people experience repression and they repress um, these these uh, traumatic events. Um, and research today shows us that most people do not. Um, and most people do not repress uh, traumatic events. Most people actually can't forget it. We talked about that when we talked about Elizabeth Loftus. Um, but there, is, there are some, some people that do have it happen and that it is a rare occurrence, but it does happen. It doesn't happen as frequently as Freud said. So this one says, well, I'm here to develop some false memories so I can forget about my own rotten past. Okay, so, you know, repressing those memories, I don't know. Elizabeth Loftus would have a lot to say about that. By the way, she was a huge, um, uh, huge critic of psychoanalysis when in her research about memory. Um, Freud's uh, ideas as a whole, though, research has shown that they si see more, show more hindsight rather than foresight. Um, he's always really good at looking backwards. He, you know, looked at people that had things that were psychologically wrong with them, and he only analyzed people that were dysfunctional. He didn't actually look at people that were, for example, quote unquote, normal. Um, so a lot of people said that, okay, yeah, you can take somebody that is neurotic and that they have problems with you know, their individual relationships with people and you can go and look backwards and you can say that it's a result of their relationship with um, particular, uh, their parents or their siblings or whatever, but it, you can't take a kid and look at their relationships now and fast forward and say, oh yes, it, they're going to develop this way. Um, psychoanalysis doesn't work that way. Um, so, you know, hindsight is always better than foresight. Um, this is continued, so you don't have to write number four again. Um, psychologists do agree with Freud on a few points. So they do agree that the unconscious is an important, um, to, uh, is important to our self, but it is important in the sense of processing information. If you remember, we talked about um, dual processing, and we talked about that some things are just automatic and you process it and you don't even realize it. That's the unconscious, but it's not exactly the way Freud thought it worked. So yes, we have this subconscious. Um, so I have the brain here that's kind of like our little um, iceberg that we talked about in the last video, um, but it's, not exactly the same as what Freud meant. Um, they also agree, psychologists also do agree today that we do have self the defense mechanisms. So all those defense mechanisms that we talked about in class, those do exist, but they're not to um, hide our true intent and they're not there um, to go and, uh, for example, hide our sexual feelings. Their defense mechanisms are more to protect yourself. And you guys would probably agree with this, that for example, when you go rationalize something on, for example, why you did bad on a test, you rationalize it. Oh, well, I had a lot to do that night. I didn't get a chance to study or it was a bad test or whatever. Those are defense mechanisms to protect yourself so that you don't feel bad that, oh crap, maybe I really don't know this information. So defense mechanisms are there. Um, this uh, cartoon says, my constant joking is a defense mechanism. My excessive laughing is a defense mechanism. Our defense mechanisms were made for each other. All right, so this is my uh, last point here, uh, and I think you're kind of running out of room to be able to see it all, but uh, these are some of the defense mechanisms. So we have uh, rationalization, and they're pouring, pouring the boiling hot water down here, and it says, excuse us, fellas, we're just cleaning out the kitchen, rationalizing that. We have anxiety down here, so because they're being dumped on. We have denial, okay, denial. They're lowering the drawbridge, uh, ignoring the fact that these you know, poor, these uh, attackers won't come in. We have the king that's regressing to a childhood state and sucking his thumb. Um, repression, I'm not sure what this guy is doing as far as repression. This displacement, this is funny, displacement. So um, hitting and yet hugging at the same time, because remember displacement is your displacing your feelings. Uh, projection, it's okay for us to throw rocks. Everyone does it, right? And then reaction formation, we're um, opposite reaction. So we have, hey guys, let's not get upset. And they have reaction formation. So those are just some of the um, ideas behind defense mechanisms. All right, well, that is, oop, this is the last slide. Okay, that is the last of psychoanalysis. Let me know if you have any questions.